What's going on YouTube? We are back again and this time we are looking at the Springfield 911. This is a subcompact 380 uh, pocket pistol and the design itself may uh, seem somewhat familiar as it looks a lot like a P238 or a uh, one of the small 380 Colts. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'll get the uh, Springfield press release out of the way and then we'll talk about the engraving on this thing and my two cents on uh, the fit and finish and mechanisms on this pistol so uh, from Springfield they say with its new 380 ACP pistol Springfield Armory's 911 is well suited for comfort size and convenience making it the perfect pistol for your everyday carry optimizing the frame to slide to trigger guard relationship creates handling characteristics unique among small pistols of its kind. Many pocket guns can be hard to handle and unpleasant to shoot. Very, very true. Discouraging practice at the range and time on the hip. However, the 911 380 both shoots and feels like a full size firearm which uh, encourages both practice and daily carry in the most concealable firearm that Springfield currently offers. It's small frame shooting with the familiarity of the 1911. The 911 380 carries a crisp, short reset, five pound trigger with the industry's only G10 trigger shoe produced by Hogue. A differentiating and satisfying feature in sm such a small pistol. And I'm going to try to get a close-up of it. I don't know how the lighting is going to work out here. But you can, you can kind of see it there. I hope this comes out in the video. That trigger almost looks like it's jeweled, but it's not. It's that G10. Very interesting stuff. Uh, this quick positive trigger squeeze, uh, this quick positive trigger squeezes off repeat rounds with reassuring precision, a key factor in surviving defensive situations. A loaded chamber indicator and uh, hammer provide peace of mind with both visual and tactile cues, allowing for various modes of carry. Designed for life-saving defensive use at close range, the 911 features ambidextrous safety and is perfectly matched with the Mariglow Pro Glow green tritium front sight inside a yellow luminescent circle. Let me get a zoom in on that thing there. I mean, obviously it is super bright front sight on there. So we've got a uh, tritium front sight inside a yellow luminescent circle and a tactical rack U-notch rear sight with a green tritium inside of a white luminescent circle. Sighting is designed to provide fast target acquisition to gain the edge in a defensive encounter. The low profile design uh, is to provide uh, snag free draw when milliseconds count. To keep the gun invisible until it's needed, the frame only measures five and a half inches long and less than four inches high with a smooth profile that's undetectable under clothing. Springfield's octo grip texturing on the main spring housing and front strap, which we'll check out that octo. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Check out the front there. Definitely feels cool in the hand. It's, it provides a lot of grip without being too much like a sandpapery grip tape type texture to it very nice so additionally the thin line grips and the mainspring housing are made of g10 by hogue should the need arise a 2.7 inch precision broached barrel gives the small gun solid accuracy at greater than confrontation distance a full length guide rod and flat wire spring enhance control and soften recoil. 
A flush six round and a seven round extended magazine provides great capacity in a small platform. Two configurations are available, uh, one with the stainless slide and then there's another one that has a black slide uh, and different color grips on it. And then you can get those two uh, different configurations also with the Viridian uh, laser grip on it as well. So the 911 is crafted from 7075 T6 anodized hard coat aluminum, the same material used in combat ready firearms like Springfield's renowned Saint AR-15 rifle and pistol. A brushed satin, matte finish, stainless steel, or black nitride slide completes the picture. The new Springfield Armory 911 is an ideal carry pistol or backup gun with the features, quickness, and re reliability to save lives. When the police are minutes away and the threat is seconds away, 911, when you have to be your own first responder. That's a pretty cool tagline from Springfield. Now let's get down to the brass tacks. Uh, I, I've owned one of these for a while. Uh, this particular example in the video here is not my personal gun. This one I engraved for resale on Gun Broker. Uh, but I can tell you a few things real quick about this gun that you might not think about until it's too late. Uh, one of them is when you go to clean it, you'll notice during disassembly, and if you're like me, you probably will not read the instructions uh, before disassembly, which it comes apart like a 1911 uh, with your takedown pin here. But what you'll find when you go to put this slide back on, is you just got to push this down out of the way now you don't you don't have to push it all the way down to get it out of the way you only have to push it down a little and this is your ejector here so the instruction manual specifically says not to press this down too far it doesn't say why and it doesn't tell you how to fix it if you do press it down too far but it does specifically tell you hey don't press this down too far naturally uh, I've gone through several, several of these pistols, not that I'm breaking them and sending them back or anything like that. I just mean that I've engraved several of them. So I've had to take the slide off and put it back on. As you can see, it will not go on right now. You just gotta push this down and out of the way and it'll bring you to this next spot here. And you just gotta push it out of the way a little more to get that slide back on there. Let's see here. There we go. Now, the first time I went to put the slide back on one of these, I pushed it down way too far. And what happens is that ejector comes back in here and is held down by your mainspring. And there's a little shelf back here. And without getting too far into it, uh, it would be really hard for me to explain it without taking this pistol apart and showing you. But basically, uh, if you press that ejector down too far, in order to uh, get it back into its proper place, you basically have to tear this gun all the way down. I mean tear it all the way down. And uh, it took me a while to figure that out because when I got my first one and, and uh, hand engraved it and took it apart, these had literally just came out. So there was, there was nothing online about about not pushing that thing down. And uh, I don't even think today there's even a tutorial or anything on, on how to fix it if you do press that, that ejector down too far. But uh, of course, after I did that and I realized it wasn't gonna go back together properly, or at least it went back together properly, but it, it would not function. Uh, at that point, I read the instruction manual and sure enough, it tells you right there, don't press that ejector down too far. So that's one thing. Uh, is it impossible? To fix if you do that no it's not impossible it's just a pain in the ass and it's gonna take you uh, once you get good at it you could probably take this thing all the way down uh, pop that ejector back into place and and get it reassembled you know in maybe 10 or 15 minutes but the first few times it's gonna take you a while and it's a real pain in the butt now the other thing that I noticed with this pistol is how thin these g10 grips are especially the edges as you can see here uh, it's a little thicker in the middle, but once you get out towards these edges, it really thins out. And although I have not broken or cracked uh, any of the sets of G10 grips on, on the ones that have passed through my 
uh, FFL inventory for resale, you know, engraving them and everything else. Uh, when I did have to take apart that first pistol to uh, reset that that ejector uh, under the mainspring, I, I noticed that it wouldn't take much to crack these grips when you have them off. Uh, especially when you go to take them off or put them back on, uh, you kind of have to slide them just a tad underneath the safety, uh, depending on what position the safety's in. And uh, also, if I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that if you tighten these grip screws down too much, it may crack them. Uh, I mean, obviously, I haven't tried that to, to tighten them down as far as they'll go, but if you drop them, on a you know a hard surface like if you're standing up and you have them in your hand and you drop them the wrong way there's a chance that if it hits like on this edge or on one of these top edges there's a chance that you may chip or uh, crack or break the grip so that's just something to look out for I mean I don't think you'll have too much of a problem uh, convincing Springfield to uh, hook you up you know maybe they won't necessarily give you free grips if you crack them uh, but they might hook you up with a little discount on a uh, on a new pair of grips. Now, I don't believe that they're making any aftermarket grips for, for this pistol yet. So it's just going to cost you some time and probably some money to make that mistake. So let's take one uh, closer look at the engraving here on this thing. Uh, I just went with some basic scroll work on the, the side of the slide. And what I had been doing on these previously is actually doing an, uh, a border and then filling in the scroll work inside that border. Um, but on this particular example, I didn't even do a border. The, the object of this uh, particular design on this one is just speed. Uh, I didn't want to put too much time into this because I want to keep the, uh, the end price of this thing affordable for the guy that buys it. So pretty cool little gun uh, I am completely smitten with mine um, I like the trigger the reset is great it feels really really good in the hand and and I think that's due to the trigger guard being just a tad larger than that of the p238 and some of your other 380s uh, but it just has a real nice feel to it for someone like me with larger hands uh, of course that extended magazine is gonna allow you to get more of a grip on it and uh, probably even get your pinky tuck, tucked up in there uh, if you're one of the people that does not like your pinky hanging off the bottom of the gun. But uh, overall, it's got all the features that I look for. It's got a great fit and finish to it. It's got some super bright sights on it, uh, which I could definitely benefit from. I love bright sights on my guns. And uh, I know that there's there has been some uh, reliability issues reported with this thing when they first came out. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if uh, people are still having issues with them, but with my personal weapon, um, I put several hundred rounds through it and I haven't had a single problem at all. Uh, I've been shooting mainly cheap target ammo, but I do run some uh, hollow points through it just so that I can reassure myself in my mind that it's gonna work great with my preferred carry ammo. Uh, but your individual experiences may vary as with every pistol uh, So make sure that if you do get one of these you take it out to the range and just uh, run it with your preferred brand of ammo to ensure uh, That it's going to do the right thing when you need it to So what's your experience with the Springfield 911? What do you think about it? Share your comments below uh, I'd love to to hear what you think or or the experience that you've had with the one that you've purchased and uh, as always, if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you, you tap that bell notification icon so that you get those updates when we do these new videos. Uh, we've taken kind of a break uh, since before Hurricane Harvey and uh, just kind of getting used to the new place that we've moved into here. Uh, I've got a steel uh, AR-500 gong target that I've set up in the back of my property. And uh, although I haven't started filming new shooting videos yet, uh, I've been doing a lot of shooting and I do look forward to doing some uh, shooting type videos for y'all as well. So again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Stay safe and we will see you next time.